you like to walk but you're limited by knee pain, particularly if you're going up steps that kind of hurts, probably arthritis or it could be something else. Oh, hi, Brad. Oh, hi. But we have five easy exercises <laughs> to help fix this knee pain. Now, does that seem like a really cool intro? Do you want to come in my house? <laughs> no, oh. no. <laughs> we'll be right there. We'll show you all five. All right, if you're in your 50s or older and you've been gradually getting more knee pain with walking, you know, it's probably arthritis you're thinking. There are exercises you can do to improve the situation and sometimes even actually make it go away. And often as we age, if you have knee pain, it can lead to weight gain, which is less fun yet, and it can lead to feeling depressed. So we want to help alleviate this knee pain to get you moving better and feeling better. That's right. So we've picked out our best five exercises to work with the knee, get the range better, get it feeling better, get that synovial fluid in there where it needs so it feels as you want and get active again. So first, <laughs> we're going to talk about the knee mechanics and then we're gonna talk about different standing and walking habits you may be having causing this knee pain. You're a knee mechanic? Yes. <laughs> All right, we'll be right with it. All right, I just wanted to have Sam give us a hand here or perhaps a knee uh, to show a little arthritic education. Now in the knee joint, uh, the arthritis that oftentimes occurs is between the femur and the tibia. Uh, you have these two surfaces. They should be shiny and smooth with that nice pristine cartilage on the cartilage here. However, after time with age, it may be a mechanical thing. Maybe if you're a little bow-legged or outward, you got knocked knee, then one side gets more worn out than the other. So that's where that's going to happen. But there's one spot that a lot of people aren't aware of is the kneecap or the patella. Now Sam's patella is kind of screwed on there. It has more mobility than this, but it's underneath here, the surfaces there that can also be arthritic. And that I think is a, a good source of pain going up and down stairs. So we'll show you some uh, stretches that'll help uh, work with that joint as well. Mike, do you have anything to add to, to the knee? I think you did a good explanation. Let's get into oh, it. Excellent, most excellent. All right, for the first exercise, we're gonna look at the knee extension. In other words, getting the knee straight. Oftentimes what happens over time is the knee doesn't fully extend because of arthritic changes. And what we need to do is work through that. A good way to assess it is Mike's gonna show, he's gonna demonstrate how you may do it on a bed or a couch. I'm gonna show how you do it on a chair with a stool like this. Let's say this is my sore knee, this would be Mike's sore knee, and if you put your two knees up together and you straighten them out, and you'll see that, well, one, the sore knee may not fully extend. Like this one, you can see fully extends all the way down, it feels good, that's normal, nice and straight. This one goes down and we have an inch or more difference and you can just tell it's not going down like the other one. Then we need to work on that and that can be done. And we'll show you a couple options because you don't want to get after it too aggressively. You can get real sore. Bob always tells his story about uh, one of his patients that got after it too aggressively, <laughs> he came back, he was a little upset. So Bob had to calm him down, they backed off, and they got him going again. So just a little red flag warning on that, or caution I should say. All right, so what you'll do is bring it out like this. Now, if you have a stool with wheels, it works really well. If you're doing it on the bed, uh, Mike will show that. The, the stool that I like to do is just go like this and Go until it straightens and stretch. If you get sharp pain, you're going too hard. If you've got just a little pain and just work it, do five or 10 repetitions. And if each time it feels like it's going a little better, you're doing good. Mike, why don't you talk about it doing it on the bed? So if you're in the bed, you're gonna be in a long sitting position like this. If my knee is stuck here, I'm gonna focus on trying to push the back of my knee into the bed. Mm -hmm. If this is problematic or you can't do it as well, you can put a pillow under your heel to get a little more height there. And then sometimes you can start pushing down. Now, you may not be able to get all the way to the mat. Just do what's comfortable and what doesn't feel painful. Oftentimes when your knee is bent like this, your hamstrings are gonna be tight. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna feel a little pull in there. Don't 
be too aggressive. You can get a hamstring strain. Then you're starting from ground zero all over again. So just take it easy. Go nice, slow, and controlled. Hold it down for a few seconds and then relax. That's right. So the whole idea of this is probably not going to straight out in the first one or two days. As a matter of fact, the first day, I would only do it once. See how sore you are the next day if it feels fine. Then you can start to push a little more, up to 10 repetitions, no more than 10. And then you may want to do it twice a day. Go the next day, see how it feels. And you may go up to three times a day, morning, afternoon, and evening. But that's as most as you'll want to go after it. And it only take a week or two weeks before you actually get it where it needs to go. It's possible that there's enough arthritic damage in there that it may not come back. And that's just what you have to find out. Now, I did talk about the patella or the kneecap. That's the next thing to assess. And the key to this is on this, I'm not going to put my foot out like this to get the knee straight. We're not concerned about that. We do want it as straight as it comfortably can be. And then you're going to completely relax the quads because if your quadriceps are not relaxed, your kneecap will not move because they're directly connected up to each other. So Mike will show his mobilizations. You can go right to left. We'll get a close-up here. Now I'm completely relaxed in the quads, and if your quads are relaxed, you can, as you can see, do it just with my fingertips. You can use this method with your thumbs, and just go back five or ten times. You might find that one way is painful, the other way feels okay. Do not push into the painful range too far. Just a little bit. Work it, and again, same manner. And you can go forward and backwards. You can do some angles in there. The whole idea is see how mobile it is. Compare it to your other knee cap, and they should be about the same. Uh, and that can work out. That can work out some. That, that's one of those things that sometimes is a little faster to mobilize than the whole knee with extension. Mike, any additions? You will know if your knee is not relaxed because if I'm tightening up right now, that <laughs> kneecap is not moving. So you have to get it to relax and then you will start to see the movement. And just do what is pain-free. If it's hurting every time, don't push more into it. Just do a nice, slow, controlled, pain-free motion. All right. Well, we went into detail a fairly amount with that, but it's important that you get it right and you don't have a situation where you're really painful the next day and then say bad words to about Mike and I. You know, we don't want that. No. Okay, let's go to number two. All right, number two, this is a pretty straightforward and simple one. It's just being aware of your standing habits in regards to your knee position. Now, what happens is some people, they'll stand with their knees fully extended. We call that end range all the way till it stops going. And they stand like that typically for you know, not forever, but as long as they don't even realize they're at full extension. That after time can really beat up the knee and when you walk, it can cause problems. So all you want to do is look at your knee and go full extension. And if you're there and you say, well, that's the way I stand all the time, simply a little flexion in the knee and hold it like that. And you may find out a whole nother story about when you're standing for long periods of time. You can stand longer with less pain. Mike, why don't you talk to him about how that feels? So this is going to make your muscles engage more and take pressure off your actual joint. So if you're having knee pain, this is going to put pressure on your joints, your hip joint, your knee joint, and your ankle. This is going to allow the quads to activate and the glutes to activate more, taking pressure off of that joint. And this is how muscles are supposed to function. It is easier to stand like this because you're basically stacking your bones on top of each other, keeping mm -hmm. in place disengaging muscles, but you want to make those muscles work because you're going to have less pain there. Right. And just another little tip. This is one that uh, I know Bob talked about with one of his patients that works so well. We're going to call this soft knee. So it's a soft knee when there's a slight bend in it, but actually stagger your feet. Go ahead and stagger. You know what stagger means? Which stagger? <laughs> no, that this way. you there you go. It's always tough working with these young guys. You know what I'm saying? So just, and that's an up to you. Just stand. If you've got a job that you're working at, you may put your stagger left foot in front, and after so many minutes, stagger the other direction, and then maybe a squared off stance, and just vary that position. Taking pressure, putting it on one knee, more on the other, and it helps uh, rest that knee a little bit. It's a good little uh, strategy. And it's right. important to stagger front to back. You don't want to 
lean on one side because uh, you're probably going to lock that knee out again. Okay. That's another thing some people do. Do they just put all their weight on one knee, f- maybe from a habit, from an injury, from holding on to the Well, you do child? it all in one leg when it's tired, and then you switch to the other leg. I used to do it. Yeah. But then what else I learned did you better. used to do? Lots of things. <laughs> Let's get on. We got work to do. Okay, the next one is how to walk. Change your walking mechanics to eliminate or actually reduce the impact on those knees. We call it walking with soft knees. Mike, why don't you explain it in detail? So most people commonly walk with a heel strike landing on your heel like this. This is going to put the forces from the ground into your ankle, then your knee, hip, back, etc. It works its way up. If you're having knee pain, you're taking that shock directly into your joints. So what we recommend is walking with soft knees. It's very similar to standing. In order to do this, you're going to stand and land more on your forefoot. You can see here, my heel is still elevated. I'm kind of exaggerating. You don't have to walk exactly like this, but this is how you will begin. When you do this, this activates your glutes more to fire again, also your quads. So you're going to be using your muscles versus putting all that pressure on your joints. It's going to lighten the load and impact forces on that arthritic knee. So when you walk, you can see I'm doing a large distance heel strike. This is a no-no. In order to walk on your forefoot, I'm not going to step this far forward. I'm going to start taking smaller steps. As I'm here, I could feel my glute start to activate. If you want to do this at home, probably not outside, you can put your hands in your buttocks, <laughs> heel strike. I don't feel anything on my right side. Now I'm putting my forefoot down. As I step through, I feel my butt muscles start to engage and activate. So you might look a little silly walking around town like this, but if you want to do it in your own home, start practicing forefoot or soft knee walking. Did Bob, I forget Bob anything? used to walk around like that in the neighborhood he, when he was practicing. He probably still does. <laughs> They're used to it. (laughs) So it's a little harder to do this if you have standard shoes as well because you're going to have an elevated heel. I have flat shoes on. If you want to start this and you don't have any, you can try walking barefoot in your house if you Mm -hmm. feel safe doing that. That's just where you can start and slowly build into it. It feels a little different, but over time, you get acclimated. That's right. And if you feel a relief and pain when you're doing that forefoot walking, it's even more motivation to continue. It does take a while i gotta admit yeah you've been walking the same way for however old you are (laughs) so it takes a while right well anyways let's get on to the next one uh we're at number three right number four is four oh yes all right now we're going to talk about negotiating up and down steps if you have knee pain a lot of times people have more pain going down steps than up but it varies from person to person and knee to knee actually so i'm going to talk about just changing the mechanics of walking if we look at my feet and this is how i normally walk up my toes normally point out a little bit that's normal for me let's say i'm having pain with on my right knee with that i'm going to try two different options. The first one is actually rotate my foot out a little bit and see how the pain, how the pain response is to that mechanics. If it feels better, then you're going to change your mechanics to walking like a duck going up and down the steps as long as it's less painful. You're aligning the joint so that the cartilage is uh, actually lining up in a more healthy manner. You can also try pointing in a little bit. Now, for me, that's awkward because I'm a natural retroverted hip. So if I I go this way, I really feel awkward. And it probably would not do anything for my knee pain if I had it. But you can try it. Some people's bodies are different. So outward and inward, and then see how that works. If your knee pain is really severe, it doesn't matter which way you point your foot, then the next option is, go ahead, Mike, you show them this one. So what you're going to do is you're going to lead up the stairs with your good leg. So say my left leg is bothering me. I'm going to lead with the right, and then I'm just going to step two. I'm just going to do one step at a time. Use the rail as you need, leading with the good leg. Now on the way down, you're going to actually lead with the bad leg because as you see as I'm going down, my good leg is supporting my weight here as I'm going down. This leg's doing the work. So make sure to use the rail. Once you get here, bring this foot down. Bad foot down. Bad foot down. So you remember this by good people go up to heaven and then the bad people go to the underworld because I won't say the other word. So up with the good and down with the bad is the trick here. And you'll, if you get a knee replacement or a hip replacement, they'll tell you exactly the same thing. So you'll be ready for that if it does 
get to that point. So very good. The idea is that you go up with the good, down with the bad, until that knee settles down, and then get back to your normal uh, gait going up and down the stairs. All right, let's go to the last and final trick. All right, last but not least. Now, this option is absolutely the easiest and the fastest way to get rid of knee pain when you're walking. The only thing is it's the most least desirable by most people. So if this is my right knee and it hurts and every time I put weight on it, oh, <laughs> and you try to bend, you know, grin and bear it and act like it doesn't hurt, well, if you're going to unload it, you simply take one of these devices, a cane, and it'll really take a lot of weight off of that painful joint and allow you to walk much smoother. Uh, you just have to adjust the cane properly and walk properly, and it really will help, I guarantee you, uh, even though you may not like it. So get a nice fancy cane that gives you some, you know, make you feel cool. Anyways, that really doesn't help with a lot of people, but it does help. I've had people do it. So if this is my sore knee, what I'm going to do is use the cane in the other hand. A lot of people get that wrong because they watch that. That's a Dr. House, Bob. Oh. Yeah, the guy, in t he, he walks with the, wrong, the cane on the wrong side. Painful knee on right, cane in the left. If you drop your hand down with good posture, the handle should go right about at the crease. It doesn't have to be exact, but if it was up here, I would change the height. Typically, canes are adjustable. If you have a wooden cane, you can always cut it off and make it shorter, but you can't cut it off and make it longer. So you got to make sure uh, you know, it's the right length and you are able to adjust it. So here we are. When my right foot goes forward, the cane goes forward, and we walk through, and you simply put weight through your arm, it takes weight off of the sore knee. And because you got a wide base, it really makes your balance and you're much more stable. So it's a win-win situation for pain, for your stability, and you're you know, able to walk. And the idea is that typically arthritis comes and it goes, it kind of gets worse and bad. You're going to use this on those bad days and do the exercises, do the range of motion exercises, one or two of them that you'll find that help. And then you don't need the cane all the time, just on those bad days is the goal. So Mike, you have anything to add about the cane from your experience? No, I think you did a good job explaining it. Okay. You have some practice there. <laughs> yeah, there's a few you years behind me. Anyways, I would say don't let that knee pain get you all hung up. Try all these. Some of them won't work for you. Some will. And do the ones that work. And uh, make put, what about the comments? They're supposed to... Let us know what works for your knee pain. Comment down below. <laughs>